I'm doing the initial blocking in with pan pastels and they've got some fantastic greys and muted colours in there and what I love about the pan pastels is that it makes it this whole blocking in stage is very very similar to working with oils and I've done oils for about 20 years so it's really familiar to me that I can quickly and easily block in with the soft tools that come with the pan pastels and once I've got the initial tones in I like to blend it down with a pastel stump a soft paper stump, a Derwent one usually, and I can use the pencils as well to um, get in more of the detailed areas. So you can see I'm blocking in with the pans, and even though this is uh, much faster than normal, as you can imagine, it's really much faster using pans for the blocking in stage than using sticks, and very, very much faster than using pencils. But pencils excel when it's time for detail, and that's where I've switched to them for the eye, I'm blocking in the white of the eye as well, which is anything but white. So, you know, always look at the reference and look for those little nuances with colour. Don't just assume the white of an eye is white. And as soon as I put that little highlight in there, that eye really came alive. So you can see how the underdrawing now with the pan parcels is really helping me to establish a nice solid firm base. And it's quite easy then to get these highlights mid-tones actually on top of the pan pastels. Now the secret to being able to get all of these layers is the type of paper I'm using and what you want is a sanded paper. Now by sanded it's got a very fine coarse texture to it. Not very not very coarse at all to be honest but very fine texture like really fine grit sandpaper. Now I usually use pastel mat but there's others available like UART and pastel card and quite a few others as well so you know try out a few yourself but what you don't want is a smooth paper like an ingress type paper You're just not going to get numerous layers with that type of paper so if you want to do detailed wildlife art which requires many layers and you want to be able to do light over dark which to me is the most intuitive way then get that sanded paper and you're not going to regret it so now i'm blocking in with some of my Conti sticks. I like to use different mediums just to show people there's different ways of doing it. So you don't have to have pan pastels or you don't have to have pastel sticks. There's lots of ways with pastels to actually uh, create a very, very similar effect. So I'm working out from the eye. I'm resting my hand on that brown piece of paper. There's nothing special about that. I've just got it brown so it doesn't go adjusting the exposure on camera. I'm putting in the first layers of fur on the head. So these first layers are the darker layers, the fur that's more deep down. Remember fur has got layers usually and the thickness means lots of layers and we need to do that when we're doing our drawings and paintings to create that same effect. I just darkened the area there for the shadows with a stick doing a little bit to the lip and then starting to put those base layers of fur in again and I'll gradually go lighter and lighter building my way all the way to the highlight so blocking in with the pans again you can see I can be quite rough you know not it doesn't have to be perfect I'm coming in with a stick now that's for the actual darker layers in between the fur marks and now I'm using that lighter shade of pencil now notice as well that you know lots of these hairs go in all different directions so you've got to be really mindful of of the type of directions and you can see I'm building the layers I'm going lighter and lighter as I said it's still not white this is still a gray pencil but it's just a very light gray so see how building those layers really gives the effect of thick fur of thickness now I'm using Rembrandt pastel sticks here for the background. Now the pastel sticks are a little bit um, more opaque than pan pastels and I wanted this, this to be very vibrant so it really brought that head forward. And then I'm coming back in then with the pencils to get individual haze, haze and softness to the edge because I don't want a cut out appearance. I want to make sure that they actually um, gives you the three-dimensional look rather than the fact that I've cut out a photograph around the edges so I'm softening those edges bringing out those individual haze 
Now as I'm putting in the fine details, hope you've enjoyed it. There's a long version, a couple of hours long of this over on my Patreon channel for just a few dollars. And it really goes into depth on how I'm doing this with lots and lots of footage that's real time on there as well. So you see every pencil stroke and every pan pastel stroke as well. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you all again soon with some new wildlife art videos. If you're looking for more art resources, I've really got you covered. I've got a dedicated tutorial website, that's jasonmorgan.co.uk. Lots of videos on there, ebook tutorials, you name it, it's on that site. I've got a Patreon art channel. So every month I put up brand new videos, and that could be pastel videos, oils, charcoals, the full length videos, and there's also photo references with the Easy Trace line art on there. I've got quite a few hundred people supporting me, and that's on Patreon. And also if you have to even more reference photos, I've got a dedicated website just packed and packed with reference photos. I think there's about 900 on there at the moment. So that's wildlife art hyphen online dot com now please with my youtube channel new videos coming on here as well if you can possibly subscribe to the channel then you're never going to miss out on new videos